Hey everybody, Andy Rogers here. Next episode of Key Points. This is episode three. I've got two folks on the line today, Chet Laro and Mariano. Thanks for joining, guys. Sure. Glad to be here. Yeah. Yeah. So we're talking about the fun projects we've been doing over the last couple of years in pharma today, solving the seemingly unsolvable uh, drug delivery challenges. These are ones where you know, there aren't clear solutions, right? And there's all kinds of problems at play, user, technical, you know, you name it. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about these, you know, throughout this episode. Um, but yeah, first let's do some, some quick intros. Uh, Mariana, why don't you lead that off? Sure. Uh, Mariana Monpower, I'm a senior, senior mechanical engineer here at Key Tech. Uh, I've been here about 10 years. Um, and for this topic in particular, I think I've been fortunate, uh, here at Key Tech where a lot of my work has been involved in pharma and, and combination product kind of innovation, um, you know, kind of helping clients understand what kind of solutions there might be for a drug delivery. Um, so, you know, pretty fun, interesting engineering work. And I'm Chet Lero, a senior industrial designer, been at Key Tech for uh, nine years now. Uh, and similar to Mariano, uh, been kind of working alongside with him on, on these projects uh, from kind of, uh, pharma prep side, all the way to kind of more personalized medicine uh, at home. So seeing the full kind of, uh, I guess, gradient of, of pharma products out there. Sometimes I think of you guys as thunder and lightning, right? You need both when you look at these projects, right? Like I said earlier, what are the user challenges and, and what are the technical challenges? So excited to have you guys expand on that uh, here in this episode. So, so unsolvable, seemingly unsolvable challenges in drug delivery, right? So. We know there are larger volumes being injected, right? Or infused, uh, delivered throughout, um, you know, a couple hours at times, right? In untrained, uh, with untrained users in, in home and remote environments. So how do you design a product that's easy to use that delivers your drug accurately? Very challenging to do when you get down into the details. Other challenges like preparing a lyophilized drug for administration, again, if you have not looked at an IFU for a while or an untrained user, how are you going to prepare this drug correctly? We're working with oncology patients, uh, trying to administer drugs in, in the home environment as well. So when you start moving from the hospital to home, you know, these drug administration problems, um, you know, are, are even more challenging. Um, so we'll talk about those. And I think what it's not just a, a technical challenge or a user challenge, right? There's business challenges. So. What are the trade-offs? How do you determine which architecture is, is ideal, uh, you know, to proceed with, um, how long is it going to take to get this to market? Um, so many variables to consider. How do we approach a unique challenge without a clear solution? Mariana, you want to start? Yeah, sure. Uh, and, and I think you spoke to it already with, there's so many variables to consider, right? So if, if our clients are coming to us with these you know, challenges where there's no obvious solution that usually means that it's because there's some trade-offs, there's some, you know, competing interests between usability or technical or other stakeholders, commercial, you know, cost and size. So the best thing you can do to start is, is really define what that landscape looks like, right? Take the step back, uh, understand what all the stakeholder sort of perspectives are that are going to drive a good solution. And what, what are you up against as a challenge? You know, what, what kind of needle are you trying to thread through to, 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 to balance all those perspectives? And the best thing to do is, is, is have the honest upfront, you know, full stakeholder perspective conversations before you start trying to think that you have, you know, a solution to a particular part, right? You don't want to design in a, in a box without, without stepping back to that, that bigger perspective. So, you know, I like to see our projects start with, you know, sort of full transparency about what, what are all those interests? And, you know, Chet can speak to a, a huge side of that is, is the usability side. Um, you don't want to neglect the, the user experience and all this and just focus on the technical. Yeah. Right. Uh, rather than just the, the stakeholders being the business side, we, we really incorporate the user as the, the design process should. So looking at the drug journey from, from kind of handoff from fabrication all the way to uh, disposal, uh, after it's been used and looking at uh, going out into the field and, and interviewing these users, observing these users, uh, collecting that, that qualitative and quantitative uh, inputs and defining uh, the real user needs is, is critical to kind of starting the process uh, when it comes to these unique challenges. 
cool. Yeah. I mean, I think all, you're, you guys are both pointing to the fact that, you know, we need requirements, right? That, that's what we're hunting for early on. And I think another way to phrase that is like, what are the bounds for the innovation? Like what, what can't change, for example, like the administration time or the injection force, right? Um, but, but what's in play, what, what can we innovate around? And, um, Shay, you, you brought up a good point about the drug journey. I mean, I think let's take, let's pause and talk a little bit more about that. You cannot just look at, you know, in a closet when someone's injecting, uh, you know, the drug, it's the entire journey from manufacturing to disposal. So Mariana, you were pretty key with one of our projects a couple of years ago to kind of get looking or start looking at that in more detail. Can you talk a little bit more about the drug journey? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, the drug, the drug journey. So the, the idea of, you know, a, a pharmaceutical, uh, container or, you know, vial or, or pre-filled syringe, right. That's going to have to be manufactured somewhere. It's going to have to be packaged. It's going to have to be you know, inventoried and, and make its way to the patient through some, you know, ho hospital, um, or, you know, direct, direct to home. Um, and then once the patient has it, they're using it to administer to themselves and, and doing a number of steps. So the, the, this, you know, this product goes through a number of steps, a number of hands and getting it successfully through all of those steps is sort of key to making a successful pharmaceutical, uh, you know, device or, or combination product. Um, and you know, when, when we start to think of the technical challenges of administration, you, you really kind of, you need to step back and think of like, there's a whole system of this product that's working together here. So you can't just focus on, you know, certain particular technical feature being a solution for just that one step without thinking how it might impact the other steps and, 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 you know, sometimes correct use or uh, compliance might be affected by, you know, an upstream step, like how it was packaged or, you know, what information or what steps the user had to take along the way of administer. So I think you have to, you know, think a little bit upstream and downstream of any particular technical event to see how it impacts the, the full usage of the device. No, that's great. Yeah. And, and, uh, as we were prepping for this, this interview, we, you know, we talked a little bit more about this, right. And Chetty had brought up the point about just even looking at the journey, building empathy for, uh, the patient, what, what does that mean? Well, uh, I think it's more so for building empathy across the whole team, uh, understanding what the users are going through, uh, what their stresses might be at the time. And, and it really helps to, to kind of ground, uh, the concept development and, and kind of really putting yourself in, uh, the shoes of, of the users and, and kind of going out there and observing and, and building these, these drug journeys really emphasize that and kind of. Uh, team members throughout the, the phases of, of these programs can kind of look back and, and really understand what's going on from a user perspective. So we're talking about the drug journey and, you know, we're laying the foundation for solving these problems, right? Where there's no clear solution. How do you, how do you deliver a large volume of fluid that historically has not been delivered or administered before? Oh, and oh, by the way, do it at home with an untrained user. So, um. You know, the user experience is, uh, most important. So when we sit down to, to brainstorm these ideas, how, how do we chat Maybe I'll let you take this one. How do you prioritize, um, you know, usability in the ideation phase? Cause you know, being an engineer personally and Mariano being an engineer, like you want to just jump into the, the technical kind of solutions, but how do we prioritize the user, um, uh, in these sort of situations? I mean, we're, we're looking at it from start to finish again, and, and just thinking about what the, the correct methods would be for, for instructing safe and effective use. So whether there's, there's prompts within our brainstorm structure that, that are identifying things that are out there already, uh, or that we've, that we've used in the past that we know are reliable. Uh, so, uh, I guess it's just the nature of, of the structure, uh, of the brainstorm and, and kind of highlighting certain aspects along the way that might have. Uh, high risk that we want to kind of tackle first and then come back and, and kind of pair some tech solution with that. Right. Right. So out of the box experience is usually the first, first interaction. Yeah. It, it's, it's project specific. I think depends on where, uh, where that, that enhancement or kind of opportunity lies. If, if the project 
product has great packaging already and when we're looking for more kind of a mechanical lock solution or something maybe we focus on that but if it's kind of a start to finish uh, phase yeah we'll we'll be looking at from that that open box experience what that labeling is they see first instructions all the way through to kind of the disposal again so case by case basis on, on really how how we're structuring these these brainstorms got it cool all right so so mariana let's say a client comes to us with an unsolvable or very challenging admin drug administration problem, what does the brainstorm look like? And, you know, how do you structure it so, so that we kind we get the results we're looking for? I think we spoke to, you know, how we kind of define the problem at the very beginning, right? So by the point in the project where we're, we're sitting down to do the brainstorming, um, we, we kind of know what we're up against and, uh, from, from the usability perspective, we've kind of put that user experience first already. Um, you know, we want to ensure that the technology solutions, you know, the mechanisms, the, the, the architecture of some electromechanical device, maybe, um, uh, are all going to fit within or, you know, achieve a certain use experience. So, you know, we know what the problem is. We know what we're trying to achieve. And then we set up, depending on the project, either very specific brainstorms on how do you move fluid from a large container through, you know, small bore tubing and an injection needle, you know, into a, a patient over an extended period of time and, and start looking at all the potential solutions that might be there for, you know, hardware architectures and see which ones, uh, you know, maybe really best, uh, you know, best enable a certain use experience. Um, or maybe the, the problem is, is wider open and, and it's, you know, more about how do you, how do you streamline a set of steps to prepare a drug, um, that, you know, is easy for the user to do. And you might, you know, you might sketch up multiple different ideas for, uh, you know, different types of, of, of plastic connectors or different types of plumbing systems, you know, little P and ID sketches of of how the fluid might need to transfer, um, you know, coming up with lots of technology ideas and then try to lay them back on that drug journey and say, okay, which one do I really think I can piece together here to, to create that use experience? So, you know, depending on the size of the challenge, I think the brainstorm goes from, from very focused, or you try to try to have an end to end, you know, type, uh, brainstorming event, or maybe you have, you know, a combination of the two and, and keep iterating because the, you know, this design cycle can be very iterative to, to try to balance that usability and technical. Right. So who's, who's in that room though? So, you know, you talked a little bit about, you know, ways to come sure. start thinking it. Yeah. But like, who's actually in the room and, and why do you think key tech is, um, you know, successful at, at, at this? Yeah. I mean, I think that's one of the things I love about working at key tech is that Anytime we have a, a challenge that we're up against, we're going we're gonna to pull in all kinds of different perspectives. I mean, between disciplines, mechanical engineers, electrical engineers, computer software engineers, you know, industrial designers, um, all with different project experiences over the years, right? That some have worked on diagnostic instruments, highly automated electromechanical systems. Others have worked on smaller, you know, injection molded parts for packaging or containers and, you know, accessories to certain, certain products. Part of what's valuable in, in those brainstorming events is, you know, not trying to make it one type of engineer, or, you know, the same way you're, you're going to have to accommodate different types of users, right? We want to have different perspectives in the room, uh, to try to help us solve that and, and, you know, kind of acknowledge everybody's different take on a solution. Um, and see how we can maybe piece a couple different ideas together to find a good balance. Got it. Yeah, I totally agree. You need uh, all kinds of perspectives. And, you know, sometimes when we're talking with clients, it's, yeah, client, do you want to join? Like you bring more empathy, Chet, to use your word, from, you know, the end patient, just talking with these patients, different drug uh, franchises within these global pharma um, companies, bring that empathy into our brain, brainstorming session. So, um, Chet, when you're leading brainstorms, I guess I'm curious, where do you find inspiration, um, you know, for, for these ideas? As product designers, we're always looking at what's out there currently. So, uh, packaging, uh, kids toys have a lot of these mechanisms that we, we are familiar with, uh, 
food industry bottles, uh, packaging of other fluids. Uh, so it, it comes with being a consumer that we're always kind of looking out what's out there, uh, understanding what new products are coming out with, what, what mechanisms are, are being employed in, in devices that aren't necessarily medical uh, devices. So we may bring uh, up some uh, how, how you might store uh, power tools in a, in a garage, for example, for some brainstorm of, of needing to fasten something and, and just looking at, at what else is out there and, and bringing those ideas into uh, kind of onto the table initially and early on in, in brainstorm sessions. Got it. Yeah, actually, as you were talking, that reminds me of, remember when I brought in or, or shared you the video of the Taylor Swift uh, concert tickets, right? Yeah. There, it was this fancy out of the box experience with like a lanyard and it was like a, you know, integrated display with a, with a video like play. So, I mean, all of that is, is definitely, I mean, we're seeing it transfer from consumer, consumer packaged goods to, to healthcare. So, um, yeah, always looking out. That's great. Let's talk a little bit more about the types of, of challenges and uh, Mariano, I know you've given a, a couple talks now, um, talk a little bit about some of the challenges that you've seen technically, right? So, so large volume, um, handheld at home untrained users what what are you seeing yeah i i, I think you, you named a few there um you know large volume delivery what what kind of containers are these large volumes being stored in um how how are you accessing or piercing that container reliably inside of a you know a body worn injector type uh device right so you have you know technical challenges of of hitting the right you know forces and and flow rates and being able to, uh, you know, sustain that delivery for an extended period of time, which, you know, kind of hints at, you know, batteries being a big challenge, right? We're going to try to potentially move a lot of fluid in over an extended period of time. Uh, maybe that fluid is viscous, maybe that fluid has to be, uh, sequenced or combined with another fluid during the administration. Um, these are sort of new and unique challenges that are happening and, um, you know, the forces and, and actuators within these devices are, are going up and, but the battery has to stay small and, um, you know, be able to, to extend the delivery and, and monitor potentially, right? So vision sensors. So you have this, you know, competing, you have these competing requirements for more power, but smaller size to make it comfortable to wear, um, to make it, you know, not have too large of a box, not be too expensive, right? So packaging, shipping, you know, business, you know, kind of cost targets. It's, it's the, the technical challenge is really becoming, finding a way to balance, um, you know, all of those sort of competing interests for success of the product into something that, you know, is still accurate, reliable, um, uh, easy to use, um, you know able to be powered, able to monitor for these extended periods of time for something like large volume delivery, um, you know, and, and at home, uh, at home devices, I think presents other, you know, unique challenges of what does the user interface kind of look like to make sure untrained users are, are capable of understanding and, and using the device. And, you know, so you have, you know, the electronics and the display and the you know, the feedback and having to think about this sort of you know, seamless experience between, you know, connected devices and, and a user, um, and their, you know, sort of daily habits and, and things that they do at home. It's the balancing act that that's really the big technical challenge that that's, that we're seeing. What, what a, we wrote a blog a couple of years ago about, um, market window, right? So. I think a, a big challenge, all these competing interests, like you talked about, right, Mariano, result in a connect, ultimately result in, and we're seeing it in the market, connected drug delivery devices, right? But think about supply chain concerns we're having now, right? So how do you design a product that the window for that product is five, six, eight year, 10 years from now, such that, you know, it is the right product for eight to 10 years from now, there will be a supply chain and the user experience will be seamless. Like what smartphones are going to be out there in 10 years? Um, so I, to me, I, I try to, we try to like take the long view, at least when I'm talking with clients on, on what the, the, um, ultimate product and ultimate user experiences you're looking for, but there are some real challenges. And I think we, uh, with creating a seamless user experience, designing for it today and having it apply 10 years from now, um, 
I think to mitigate that, you know, in, in, in talking with our EEs and our CEs here at Key Tech, we just have to uh, maintain close relationships with, with our suppliers, um, folks like the folks at Arrow or, you know, even the larger CMs like Flex, pick their brain on what are they doing when they, when they go to scale these products? Like how, what are the, the vendors, the component vendors we should be talking with now, um, that will be around in the, for the long run, seeing a lot of that. So let's talk more specifically about this large volume delivery and let's, let's call it a, an at home body worn device, right? Because you can't hold an, an auto injector for, you know, longer than, you know, 10, 20, 30 seconds before, you know, you're going to have use errors and it's just not acceptable. Right. So, um, talk a little bit, Mariana, I'm uh, uh, sorry, Chad, let's start with you on, um, developing a large volume body worn device. What are some of the challenges that, that you've seen, uh, just in maybe more broadly, just body worn devices from a user perspective? I don't know if we want to jump right into body worn because uh, we, we like to start with kind of architecture definition and maybe the use case drives it to be more tabletop or, or kind of handheld, uh, but not kind of at the ejection site. So, uh, but body worn, as, as Mariano was mentioning, I mean, it all comes down to that size and fit and uh, minimizing uh, the number of use steps uh, for setup and, and kind of minimizing that, that time that the user has to be uh, kind of wearing it and interacting with it. So. Uh, it's probably the, the main challenge there is, is kind of that, that size, uh, form factor fitting around the, the needed volume and, and power constraints, uh, and how that, that is, uh, I guess, secured to the body and, and different methods uh, of doing that comfortably. Got it. Mariano from, from your, from the technical perspective, what do you think are some of the challenges there? Yeah, I, uh, th th this kind of, this borders technical and, and usability a little bit, but, um, I think this idea of negative transference, this idea of users having their own biases or perspectives or, or, you know, experiences in their life with other similar devices or, you know, their own interpretations of how these at home body worn devices might be used. They're going to introduce behaviors and potential use errors that you almost can't expect as an engineer because none of us can have every potential user's perspective and, and what they've, you know, what they've worked with before or how they think that the device is going to be used. So on, on the technical side, I think this, the challenge is, is really to take a step back and, and, and let use studies and let user feedback and, uh, you know, input from, from different use cases really, uh, really define the technology needs, um, and try to experiment with, with ideas that may not, that, that aren't obvious in the beginning, but, you know, maybe work with users experience in a way to create a successful mechanism, you know, and, 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 and this, talking about a high level is kind of weird, but like, if I use a specific example, I'll try like, you know, something about the way you, you hold the device and press a certain button, maybe to engage the injection mechanism. Maybe there's, there's something about the form that suggests it's grabbed a certain way and they squeeze a certain way that, you know, technically creates a force or some interference or something that, that the mechanism doesn't work right when you hold it like that. But technically on, on the engineering side, we could say, oh, well, it's been designed to be used a certain way and it functions when it's used that way, but you've, you've missed a real, you know, you, you've missed a challenge there. If you don't acknowledge, well, you know, the users may have experience with something that looks similar and they, you hold it a different way and that could introduce a, a different force or action that that's going to mess up that mechanism. So I think uh, being open to that iteration and being open to that, that input from the usability side to rethink, uh, the technical solution is, is, is really important. Yeah, I agree. I was just going to chime in. Um, yeah, obviously the user technical marriage is paramount and, and, and the crux of this, this, uh, these types of, of products that we're designing, but in terms of like a technical challenge, I, I feel like we're seeing, uh, you know, just fluidic control, right? Something as simple as like, what does this thing actually need to do? It needs to administer a drug, um, and it needs to do it very accurately. The idea is you need to create, uh, a good empirical model so that you can, um, you know, predict the performance of your drug delivery platform before you, you know, get too far down in your development program and realize that, 
um, maybe this, this uh, drug delivery device isn't administering the drug as accurately as you had, had predicted. So build this model, this analytical model, um, to inform design decisions and, and revise this model over time. Uh, cause what you don't want is this drug to not, uh, this, uh, drug delivery device to not administer the drug, um, as accurately as you're, you're promising. Oh. But all right. So guys, we're getting, get close to the end here. So, um, so we're brainstorming these solutions, the very challenging drug delivery problems. Um, some of them are very specific. Some of them are very broad. Um, but I think we, we talk a lot about architecture freeze. Like, when do you know that this idea that we've come up with is the one, right? When, when do we know it's the one? So what are we, what are we looking for? What, what needs to get, um, um, what, what needs to be proven, um, to say global pharma, uh, division, this idea, this concept is worth investing, you know, many millions of dollars and many months, really time is money, uh, to, to get this on the market. So Chet, let's start with you. What, what are we looking for to say, look, this concept is viable for, for a drug, um, you know, franchise. Yeah, I, th I think we've talked about it a lot already, but, uh, users successfully, uh, using the, the product, the architecture in a safe and reliable and, and effective way. And that's done through hopefully uh, numerous user evaluations along the way. So uh, as the concept progresses from that initial brainstorm uh, into something more functional or, or even just kind of uh, handling models that the users are, are able to understand, uh, they're proving that they're understanding instructions correctly uh, and going through uh, the workflow, uh, the intended workflow in a safe and effective way, uh, I think goes a long way to proving that, that it will be a success, successful product. So Chad, talk a little bit more about that. What, what do you actually need to do? Like in number of user studies, things like that. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's all uh, comes down to risk space. So we'll be uh, conducting uh, UFMEAs, looking at, at where along the, the use uh, task list, uh, there are critical steps and, and really focusing on those ones, uh, and putting those, those specific tasks in front of users and just, uh, really proving and showing that the users are, are using them correctly at that point of, of the use step. So, uh, it can range from, uh, maybe two or three sessions to kind of, uh, many more than that. I, I'd say if it's a kind of a large scale, uh, many user group, uh, product. Uh, so, uh, we'd like to, to kind of do these, uh, at every phase gate, uh, just to make sure that any updates, uh, refinements aren't introducing any new errors or, or, uh, critical tasks, uh, have been mitigated. So, uh, again, it's, it's all kind of case by case basis, but, uh, it's definitely has to be a part of the process. Cool. And Mariana, what about, what about you? What are you, what needs to be proven, uh, to, to, to have the confidence that this architecture is, is viable and it is the one proceed with. Yeah. And I, I think on the, on the technical side, you know, we're looking for that, that sort of feature and, and function success and that, uh, we're identifying any red flags that may, uh, you know, cause an error in some functionality. Um, and that through, you know, dedicated engineering testing or test samples and, um, you know, uh, putting it through various conditions that we might think are, you know, possible in, in the real world. So you, you might, you know, identify certain, uh, you know, worst case scenarios technically and, and really try to vet the technology, test the technology against that and, um, you know, success in terms of, of architecture freeze or knowing that you have a good technical solution means you've, you've broken that system down into every function and, and feature that's necessary, uh, for successful use and that each of the technical elements along the way have been, have been proven and tested in some quantitative, quantitative way, if you can, right? So you're making engineering test pieces, you're, um, you know, setting up a test matrix against certain conditions and, and you're doing that across, across every step, um, you know, different, different projects require a different level of how deep you go, um, depending on, you know, how, how big is the potential error space, right? How many different ways can this product be misused or malfunction? 
um, and make sure that you're at a confidence level that that's appropriate to say like this, this concept holds up in all those cases. Yeah. Right. I think building on that, we, we've gone as far as to build unique devices that are in an air state to test how a user can get out of it rather than putting the, the fully kind of end product in front of the user and then kind of, they might not see that air, but we want to make sure that, that we've kind of see that air and that the user can be able to recover for it. So it, it sometimes goes as far as designing a kind of a, a standing product that the user can interact with itself. We haven't touched on, on training. I guess just touch on that real quick. Like at what level do you train or should we train these, um, these folks that are, that are part of our preformative studies? Um, how much, are, how much training are we doing versus, uh, versus not right. And just letting them try it cold. Yeah, it, it, it builds as, as the, the project goes on. So we'll start pretty at an exploratory level just to see again, if the user can understand how they're supposed to hold uh, the device or, or put the device on and, and kind of gauging that intuition early on and then start to introduce more and more training, uh, IFUs, uh, product labeling and, and packaging along the way, but, uh, it really should be a, a balance of what is the expected training. So if the expected training is that they'll, they'll have someone sit down with them for an hour uh, beforehand, we'll, we'll, we'll do that. We'll include that. Maybe they, uh, come back the next day and then have to perform the test and kind of inherently have some sort of, uh, decay, uh, for that training. Uh, but it, again, it, it varies, but normally we start, uh, with, with usually no training, just again, for that, that intuition. And then as the product becomes more defined, uh, start to kind of, uh, build in what the expected, uh, training regimen is. Got it. All right, guys, I think we've reached the end of our, of our topic. So, um, yeah, I hope this is helpful for those of you listening, watching, um, you know, when you're up against the challenge where there isn't a clear solution, obviously you need multiple disciplines, brainstorming, you need to focus on the user, let the user and the drug journey drive the innovation process, think outside the box and then, you know, prove it piecemeal, like we've talked about, um, and, and from an engineering and from a user perspective, so that you build that confidence from a foundational perspective, building confidence up to, up to that finished, uh, that final architecture. So, you know, we have not talked a lot about the patients. I don't know that that's what gets me out of bed, right? Is like, we're doing this for the patients. There are some really sick people out there, cancer, oncology, drug administration, um, other, other disease states, people don't want to leave their houses. They want to use these products at home and they want to make sure that everybody wants that drug to work. And, you know, we're trying to just do our part here. Um, at key tech, um, you know, to help make these, these user experiences seamless and, um, you know, easy to use. All right. Thanks guys. That's it from key tech. Thanks everybody. <laughs>